We will begin the Bumblebee Snuggle Sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Let's begin today's tutorial on working on this fabulous Bumblebee Snuggle Sack by Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is a comprehensive start to finish project. In fact, I'm working on the project behind the scenes in order to show you all the steps involved for making the snuggle sack. The main feature about the bumblebee is that it's just not a straight up cocoon. There's bulges in the different rings and it makes it for really kind of a neat look instead of just being very plain Jane. So it's more than just colors, it's about shaping too. This bumblebee minus the filming and preparation time took me approximately 12 hours to make. This project can be done in a couple days and that's assume you don't get distracted of course. On screen now is the anatomy of the bumblebee and we will return back to this chalkboard in between each lesson. There are seven steps involved in making this bumblebee and without further ado let's start off by examining the pattern and then we'll go from there. So here's the free pattern available by Yarnspirations.com. This tutorial is complementing this particular tutorial and again it's free. And what we have is that we have the ball counts and you're going to notice that you need four balls of black, three balls of yellow, and then one ball of white. And you can see the difference of why you would need more black versus yellow. So what we have here is that we have the abbreviations that are used inside the pattern just like so. And we're going to start off in the first ring. So one thing I expected happen based on just, I don't know what I was thinking, but I always thought because we've been starting the other sleep stacks from the top that this one would start at the top. But this one actually starts on the bottom and works its way back to the top. And I think it's just because you got the little cute little stinger here and then we're just going to get bigger and bigger. So there's a lot more instructions that are on here versus the shark that we did in the sense of the cocoon shape itself. So one thing I learned real quick is that we're gonna get bigger and bigger but then we start to decrease to create like uh, these bumps that are up here. In this particular sample you don't really see that it's doing that but that's just because it's the angle in which we're looking at. So there's a lot of instructions here but when you break it down step by step you realize that it's really not a big deal. So it's being separated by the rings. So this is second ring, third ring, fourth ring. Fifth ring says repeat, you know, going back. And then we're gonna do the uh, wings. So what you're gonna do here in this particular pattern, you need two sizes of crochet hooks. So you're gonna need the size eight millimeter size L and you're also gonna need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today in order to play with this tutorial. So this main area here is all done with the big hook and the wings are done with a smaller hook in order to provide a more tighter look and finish. So that's the pattern in general. Now as a disclaimer in this particular tutorial that I'm going to be using the coal which is the Bernat blanket in black. You will know and obviously you'll be able to see it in this video that black is very difficult to film in order to see the individual stitches. In this particular tutorial in order to keep true to the pattern and to keep true to a uh, bumblebee I am using black. You'll just have to listen to my words for the instructions if you struggle to read instructions. So just uh, follow that along. I really don't want to compromise using a different color here because I really do want this finished look for mine. So that's gonna be the issue today no matter how much lighting I have. I have 300 watts of lighting bouncing off of this project but it's gonna be very difficult to see the stitches. So you just have to be patient and just work it as good as you can get it. Okay, so let's stop talking about the project and let's actually get hooking it. So let's go from the very bottom, ring number one, and we're gonna start from the stinger and work our way up. So let's hook to it. So let's begin right from the very beginning and I'm gonna use a stitch marker, just a spare piece of yarn that's very clear to tell because I was actually, this is take two, I've actually done all the way to number one to five and I was confused on how many stitches I got because I really can't see because it's black yarn on where the stopping and startings are. So I would recommend getting that. So let's start off with a slip knot and let's chain up two. I'll just put that aside. So one and two. 
So what you wanna do in the very first chain, okay, second chain from the hook or it's the first one, it's the same thing, is that you wanna put four single crochets into that first one. So one and then two, three and four. And you want to join this then to the beginning. Now if you're confused at all just count back one, two, three and four and just go to the fourth one to do a slip stitch. Okay, that's what you need to do. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm just gonna pull up a larger loop and I'm gonna grab this other yarn and I'm going to just get a smaller hook and pull that through. Therefore I can see when I've gone all the way around. You know what, when you need tools like this, <laughs> spare yarn is fabulous. Okay, so that concludes number one. Let's move along to round number two. Rounds two and three are the same thing that we need to do. So we need to chain up one and we do one single crochet into the first one and one single crochet into each and there's only four of them. So let's count those. So one, two. Okay, I'm just gonna flip it. Um, I'm flipping it so that the bottom is facing me. So we got three. Once this gets bigger it's a lot easier to work with. And then four is the last one. Okay and you're thinking okay the, well the stitch marker is over slightly. Remember that's the slip stitching of it. So that just shows you where the slip stitch is. So once you get your four in just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with like so. And that concludes off round number two. So what I wanna do is that in order to help myself further I wanna take this stitch marker and feed it through where I did the slip stitch this time. Therefore I can see it. Okay and let's conclude and move up to row number three. Row three is the same thing as row number two. Chain up one, one single crochet into the first one and one into each and there's a total of four all together. So that was one, two, three, And four is next. And what I want to do is just slip stitch it to the top of the first one. Okay, so that shows you where the slip stitch was in the last time. Just coming up to the first single crochet that you started with and then move up that stretch marker and that was round number two. So when I say move it up just drag a piece of it, only one strand up with you and therefore you just carry that up as you go. So that concludes off round number four or sorry round number three. Let's go for round number four. Now round number four we're gonna get slightly bigger now. The stinger is now going to go to the bottom. Now this uh, tail end that we ended up with right in the very beginning I would safely say to cut that out now. You've got that. That'll be buried inside the project. So let's uh, begin and we're going to move along and go for number four. So we're gonna get slightly bigger this time. So round number four we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do a single crochet into the first one. And then the next one we're going to do two single crochets to make it bigger. So there's gonna be two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay, the next one is gonna be a single crochet by itself. And we're gonna finish this one with the last one being two single crochets in there. So one and two. So we've just gone from four stitches now to six and then we're gonna slip stitch it to the beginning one that you had, the beginning single crochet and move up that stitch marker once again just to show that with, uh, show that stitch to you. Once I get more of this project into my hand um, it appears that I'm struggling at this moment but the reality is I'm not. It's just because it's not a lot of material to be holding at one time in my hand. So once it gets bigger these projects get a lot easier. So let's uh, conclude that. So that was round number four. Let's insert our hook again and go for round number five. Okay row number five we're gonna get bigger once again. We're gonna increase our stitches. So we're gonna chain up one. First one is gonna get two single crochets. I know you cannot see my stitches very well so just follow my words. So two single crochets first one. Then it's one single crochet into the next. Next one is two single crochets. Okay the next one is one single crochet. We're almost done. The next one is going to be two single crochets 
into the same one and then the final is gonna be one single crochet by itself and then you're just going to join it to the top of the beginning single crochet that you started with. So just going right in there, pull it through and move up your stitch marker once again. That was round number five. I'm going to um, stop telling you to move up the stitch marker. You should do it automatically from this point. Um, it'll save you a lot of grief and time um, if you do so. So please uh, continue to follow along and just do that each and every time that I tell you to move up your stitch marker instead of me having to show that to you each and every time. Okay, round number six we're gonna start really expanding at this point. So we're gonna chain up one to start and then each and every stitch around is gonna have two single crochets in there. So just put two single crochets into each stitch going all the way around. Join it with the first uh, single crochet and move up your stitch marker. I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number six. Round seven and eight are both the same thing but I'll take you through both because just to make sure that you got it. So you're gonna chain up one. The first stitch is going to be two single crochets into the same one and then the next two single crochets in a row will just be one single crochet. So one and two. Okay, so the repeat pattern going all the way around. The next one will have two single crochets into the same stitch. So one and two and then the next two are single crochets by themselves for two. Please do that all the way around for round number seven. Finishing up round number seven, the last two will be two single crochets by itself if you're following along with that same patterning of two in the one and then two into the next or one into the next two. So this join it to the beginning just like so and move up that stitch marker and we're gonna start off round number eight which is identical in the same round. You're gonna notice it's gonna have a nice bell shape at the bottom just like you see it in the photograph. So moving up to round number eight, very simple, chain up one. First one is gonna be the same thing of two single crochets in a row or into the same one and then the next two are gonna be one single crochet each. Okay, so the repeat pattern again is two into the same one and then the next two are going to be single crochets each. Please repeat that all the way around for round number eight. I'm concluding round number eight. The final two are just one single crochet each because I'm keeping it in balance with that same repeat pattern and join it to the beginning single crochet. Uh, I've gotten a lot easier working with this. Uh, you know it always takes a little bit of uh, time getting used to the thicker yarn uh, when we're going to play with this kind of thing and uh, again more in my hand is a lot easier for me to hold as a person as well. So let's uh, move up the stitch marker and let's move up to round number nine. Round number nine we're going to start increasing and now I'm getting more and more comfortable for this because it's starting to look more like the shaping of a hat. So we've gone from a little stinger to then the base. Number nine is going to be chaining one and two single crochets into the first one and then for the repeat pattern is that there's gonna be three single crochets in a row by itself. So this is gonna be one, two and three. So the repeat pattern for round number nine is that there's gonna be two into the same one and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two and three. So please continue to do that same patterning all the way around. So two into the same and then three by themselves. So let's conclude round number nine. The final three will, if you're keeping balance, will be three single crochets in a row. And then we're just gonna join it to the top of the beginning single crochet. Move up that stitch marker and let's begin round number 10. Round number 10 we're gonna get even bigger. So we're gonna chain up one, two single crochets into the first one and this time there's gonna be four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three and four and the next one is gonna be two single crochets into the same one. Okay, so the repeat pattern all the way around was the two single crochets into the same one and then four by themselves. So that was one, two, three and four. Please do that all the way around for round number 10. Finishing round number 10, the last four are one single crochet each in order to keep it in balance and then join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. Move up that stitch marker and let's do round number 11 next. Let's go for round number 11. We're gonna chain up one and it's gonna be two single crochets into the very first one and we're gonna get bigger so this one this time is going to be five single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, 
four and five and then the next one is two to, into the same one. So one and two and then the next five are by themselves. So continue that one, two, three, four and five and then the next one has got two and then continue that same pattern all the way around. Okay, that was round number 11. Finishing up round number 11, there's gonna be five in a row. Don't forget that and then you just gotta join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with and move up that stitch marker for round number 11. Round number 12, we're gonna chain up one and two single crochets into the first one and then this time we are still getting bigger so the next six are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then the next two are in the same one and then six again in a row. Please do that all the way around for round number 12. Finishing up round number 12, this is four, five and six and I just want to join it then to the top of the beginning single crochet that I started with. So we're gonna move up to round number the rest of them using a, te uh, a measuring tape and I'm gonna show you how to do that but I wanna make sure I move up my stitch marker next or I'm gonna get confused. So I'll be right back and we're going to then use your tape measure to do the remaining of this part of the ring which is ring number one. I'm coming up all the way around on number 12 and remember there's gonna be six single crochets in the end of this one. So you should have a total count of 64 stitches going all the way around now and what we're going to do then at this point and let me just verify that. So I got so one, two, three, four, five, sorry, one, two, three, four, five and six. That was the it and join it to the beginning. So now you wanna verify that, that you have 64 on your on your circle just uh, count all the way around and then what you want to do then is that we're gonna use a tape measure and just now continue to build this just in a continuous revolution until it gets to a certain dimension and let's cover that next. So now what you wanna do is that we want to go in a continuous revolution so you're gonna chain up one and go one single crochet in each and you wanna now do that completely and it's gonna start coming around like a top of a hat. So what you have to do is that you have to get to 12 inches from this point. So just measuring out. Okay, so we have to get to over here. So you're just gonna go in conti continuous revolutions. Um, just make sure you slip stitch in between and just do one single crochet in each and stop when you get to 12 inches and that'll be the conclusion then. We want to then um, then do a decrease round and then we're going to then change to yellow. So please just do one single crochet in each. So just coming back into your project Okay, and chain one and one single crochet into each going all the way around and then just join it with the slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and continue to move up. So I'll see you back here and get 12 inches done and uh, I'll have to get that done off camera before I can move on to show you the rest. So I'll see you here in just a moment or two. Okay, so now I'm back. I sat out on the patio had a nice cool drink and I got my 12 inches done. So it's 12 inches from the tip of the the stinger right to where I am. So this knows that I am ready for the next step of ring number one. So we only have one more round to go and you can see I've been carrying up my stitch markers as I've been going along. As an experienced crochet I probably did not need to do that but I'm doing it more for tutorial purposes just to show you and really I don't mind it and it takes a few seconds anyway. So let's uh, begin the final round of ring number one. Ring number one meaning that this is the black color and then we're gonna switch back to yellow or we're gonna switch over to yellow. So we're going to chain up one and we're gonna single crochet the first two together and then the next two will be single crochets by themselves. So if you remember what we did in the very beginning, we talked about the idea that it's gonna be bulging, okay? So you can see that it's gonna come in and compress and then it's gonna pop right back out and you can see it, it's kinda doing that here. So this is just one of those concepts that you see here. So we're gonna get a little bit smaller now so we can create that bulge and then when we come back with the yellow we're gonna increase it back. So we chained up one already and what we need to do then is that we need to uh, put two together and then two single crochets in a row. So we're chaining a one already. So the first one here we're gonna stick our hook into the first stitch pull through, do not finish it, go into the next stitch available to you, pull through. You now have three loops on your hook. I want you to yarn over and pull through all three. 
So two just became one and so you're going to single crochet in the next two. Just one each and in the next two are gonna be together. So going in, pull through, going into the next one, pull through, pull through all three loops and those two just became one and then two single crochets in a row and then the next two are together. So in, pull through, going into the next one, pull through and then pull through all three. Please do that all the way around and then we're officially done with the black at this time. So I'm coming up all the way around. The final two stitches are two single crochets in a row because I'm keeping that count of two together and then uh, two in a, in a row single crochet. So it just stays in balance. I'm going to join it to the top of the first thing, uh, uh, two together that we started with and that's officially it. I'm gonna move up the stitch marker before I fasten off. So ring number one is officially done and you will see that in this now you'll see that it kind of really did pull in like this just like it should. So to fasten off what you're going to do with every one and I know it's black and it's hard to see but what I want you to do is just cut that yarn and kind of just cut it and just pull it through. Sometimes it's just easier to use your fingers. Just pull things through and what I want you to do is just in and out of these stitches just weave it back and forth for about two inches and what you're gonna do in the next round you'll catch that underneath so that it will not be shown. If you feel more comfortable you can use a darning needle if you wish but I think for this purposes I think you can do a really good job with this. So what you wanna do in the next round when you're coming around is that not only you're gonna go in the stitches but you're gonna make sure that this straggler that you see which I know it's hard to see will just be right on top of the line so that the next one will wrap around. So once you get it in enough times just cut it off and that concludes ring number one. Good job! So let's move up to the second ring and we're going to make the diameter a bit bigger with a few more rounds and then just go in regular rounds around and around up into the third ring. You can do this. I know you can. So let's get going. So let's begin the second ring. So the second ring is yellow and what we're going to do is that we're immediately going to compensate. Remember how we just went in and made things smaller? Well we're gonna make it bigger once again just to create that line that you showed the bulging and then we're gonna get even bigger in this particular round. So this is going to be uh, quite a nice round to work with and let's begin the second ring. So let's begin the second ring and it's school bus yellow. This is the yellow in the B and we're going to create a slip knot and put it onto the hook. Now remember when we did the slip stitching lines those are in the slip stitch itself. So remember that the first one is just slightly over from it. Okay, just don't forget that. You probably have clued into that by now. And so what I want you to do is I want you to leave this straggler down on top of the line and grabbing the yarn that goes to the ball just pull through, chain up one and now we're ready to go. So let's say begin and we're gonna compensate because the last round what we did is that we made it smaller so it's creating this bulge. Now we're gonna make it bigger to get it back to where it was so that it creates that line. So we're going to just chain up one which I've already did and we're gonna do two single crochets into the same one which is the first single crochet. Tighten up your stitches here and when you go to crochet I want you to leave this down on top so that it goes right up over top of it. So let's uh, two single crochets into the first one so one and two and next two are going to be one single crochet each. Okay, so one and two. Okay, the next one is gonna be two single crochets into the same one. So one and two and then the next two are gonna be by themselves. Okay, so before what we were doing in the last round is that we were making two together. So what we're doing is we're putting two into the same one to create that to go back out to its regular size. Please do that same patterning all the way around. So two into the same and then the next two are by themselves. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm putting two into this one and then the final two are just one single crochet each. So I've not done anything special. I'm just following the repeat pattern and it takes me back to where it should. So I wanna join it to the first single crochet. Now you can finally see my stitches. Okay, just join it with the slip stitch and I'm going to move up the stitch marker because I have been and I know it's easier for me to tell with the lighter yarn but you know old habits dive <laughs> are hard to, hard to skip. So I like stitch markers that just really help me keep count of my project as I go. Especially when it matters when you have decreasing and increasing just like so. So let's move up and we're gonna do the next one which is the next round for the second ring.
So the next round what we want to do, remember when we were coming in the black area way down here somewhere and we were doing two into the same one and then we went six and then two into the same one and then six. Well right now we're on the second round for the second ring and what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue that same patterning uh, going around to create the increase. So we're going to chain up one and what we're going to do is then put two single crochets into the same one. Okay. And then the next seven are going to be one single crochet each. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now that you got your seven in there, the next one is two into the same one to create that increase. So that's the repeat pattern all the way around for the second one of doing the ring. And what, so it's two into the first one, seven by itself and then two and then continue that same pattern going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around, there's two into the same one and then the final seven are by themselves. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So then you just join it to the top of the first single crochet that you started with right there and you move up your stitch marker if you wish. We only have one more round of growth on this one for the second ring and uh, that makes it really quite easy and then we're just gonna do single crochets for another 12 inches just like we had done already in the black. So let's move along. We're gonna chain up one. So this is the next round in the second ring. The first one is gonna have two single crochets and we're gonna do one more. This is the last round of growth for this uh, second ring and the next eight are gonna be by themselves this time. So one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then the next ones are two into the same one. Okay, so to continue that same pattern going all the way around, this is the last time you'll be growing it and then we're gonna go 12 inches of just straight single crochets all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around, the final eight are by themselves. So I'm not, I've counted, uh, I'm just not counting with you. So we just join it to the top of the beginning single crochet and now it becomes really easy from this point. So what I need you to do is I need, need you to do 12 inches of this yellow right from the start. Okay, so it's right from this point and going forward for 12 inches. All it is is single crochet around and around until you get your 12 and then we're gonna meet back here, finalize that round off. So chain up one, one single crochet into each, slip stitch when you get around and then continue to go until it's 12 inches. I'll see you back here in just a moment and it's gonna take me a bit to get there and I'll be right back though here in camera time. Okay, so now I'm back. I have my base done here, ring number one. Okay, first ring and now second ring. So now I've got my 12 inches from here to here and what I want to do is do my final round again. I need to create that kind of indentation that you see here and we're going to be doing that next. So this is the final time that we're gonna go around with this yellow and then we're gonna switch back to black then for the next ring. So let's insert our hook and let's begin the final round of this yellow before we switch back to black. Okay, the final round is just like how we did here. Okay, so it's just exactly the same. So we're gonna chain one to begin and then what we're going to do is then the first um, two are together. So just insert in, pull, okay, and then insert into the next one, pull. You got three loops on the hook, pull through all three, okay? And then the next two are by themselves. So one and two and then the next two are together. So this is the repeat pattern all the way around. So the next one's in, pull, into the next one, pull. Here's your three, pull through all three. Okay, do you get that? So these two are by themselves and then the next two are together. So in, pull, next one, pull, okay, together. Please do that all the way around for the final round of this yellow for the second ring. So I'm coming up all the way around on the final and these are together because I'm keeping in line with the pattern and then the final two are one single crochet each. We're now officially done the yellow. So what I want to do is attach it to the first one with the slip stitch and let's fasten that off like I did with the black. I know it was difficult to see but so you can see how it's done this time if you missed it. So I'm just gonna cut the string and I'm just going to pull 
the yarn through like so. Just pull on it and then I wanna weave it in and out of the edge. So now I'm gonna be ready for the black once again. Again, it's gonna be very difficult to see. Unfortunately, there's no technology that I have access to in order to make black <laughs> uh, easier to see here on camera. So I do understand that and I, I suspect people will be making comments on that as well. So let's uh, move along. We're ready now for the third ring and this is what we have at this moment. Perfect. So let's get you started on the third ring and we're still going to make it a little bit bigger. So without further ado, let's get busy. So let's begin the third ring together. In the third ring what we want to do just like we did over here, we went narrow and then we bounced right back out and we're gonna be doing the same here. So we went just went narrow on the last round of this if you remember and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bounce right back out to the, what the size was. So it creates that indentation of the bumblebee shape. So we're just gonna start up and we're gonna start up here. I remember I'm gonna move up my stitch marker one more time. Um, it's just a lot easier to tell when you're working with this uh, kind of yarn where you are. So I'm gonna start on the first one. Remember that the stitch marker was in the slip stitching area and not an actual stitch. So I'm gonna just move over and just attach it with a slip stitch. Okay and just pull through and I wanna chain one. So I wanna lay this one down on top of the line and go right over it as I go. So in this one here where we were getting decreasing on the last round. So this one we're gonna increase and it's just like we had already done before. So the first one we'll get two single crochets into the same one. Okay, so we're gonna bounce it back out and make it bigger again and then the next two are one single crochet each. Very easy, you already have done this before. So the next one is gonna be two into the same one. Look how I'm going right up over top of that one right here. So it's gonna be buried right underneath and the next two are by themselves. So I want you to continue this round all the way around. So the next one is two into the same one and the next two are by themselves. Please do that all the way around. This is the first round of the third ring. I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just doing two in the same one and then the final two are just one single crochet each and then we just join it to the beginning single crochet at the top. So now we're gonna get a little bit bigger in the next round and this is going to allow us to expand even more because you notice it's still a little bit narrow and as I finish this one here I wanna move up my stitch marker just like this and I wanna begin the next round. So let's begin and let me tell you a little bit about that. So coming back to where we are we're about here in the yellow and we were doing a total of eight single crochets in a row and then two into the next one to make the growth bigger. So that's where we stopped before we started making going all single crochet all the way around. So right up here now we're gonna continue that same pattern going all the way around and this time it's gonna be chain up one and then it's two single crochets into the first one. Okay, two into the first and then the next nine will be by themselves. So that continues that same pattern to get uh, bigger in increments. So what we want to do is we wanna go nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now that you have your nine in there, the next one is gonna be two into the same one to give you that bigger size that you need. Okay, so please go all the way around. So two in the same one, nine by themselves and then two into the next and continue that same pattern all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. Here's my two into the same one there and what I want to do then is the final into the, to the final nine is going to be one single crochet each. So two, three and I can count it if I want to. Um, I know it's accurate, I've already pre-counted. So the last nine then will be one single crochet each. So you're just gonna get there and then at the very end you're just going to join it to the top of the first single crochet and that concludes that round just like that. So I'm gonna move up my stitch marker and let's move on to the next round. So let's move up another round. We're gonna chain one and then we're gonna increase yet again. So the first one is gonna have two single crochets in there and then this time there's going to be ten single crochets in a row. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, and 10. And so you just have to keep repeating that all the way around. So the next one's gonna be 2 into the next one and then another 10 by itself. Please do that all the way around for this round. The final going all the way around then, the last, here's the 2 into the same one and the final 10 are by themselves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So then we just join and we gar we have to grow one more time before we uh, are moving on in this process. So let me just join it to the beginning. I'm always making sure I get two strands when I do so and I wanna move up my stitch marker and we're gonna move up to the next round. We're gonna get one more bigger before we then just go single crochets all the way around for another 12 inch space. So let's uh, continue and move up. So let's continue and this is the final growth on this ring, ring number three. And what we're going to do is we're gonna chain up one and then two into the same one. And then this time there will be 11 in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11 and then 2 again. So what's gonna happen here is that once you get this round done, which I'll leave this for you to do now, I need you just to go around just like you did before and do single crochets until the black measures 12 inches once again and then we're going to come back and then we'll do a decrease round in order to create that look and then move back to yellow. So please do that same thing all the way around. So 2 into 1 and then 11 and then 2 into 1 and 11 and continue then from this point forward of just single crochets around and around and around until this space equals 12 inches and then I'll meet you back here at that time and uh, we'll continue along with this project. So in real time, it'll be a while but in camera time, I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and now I'm finished, almost finished, uh, ring number three. In ring number three, what's happening is that we have to do one more row. So I have my 12 inches done right here and now I have to do my final row of doing the decrease once again, just like we did over here to get it to do the bulge look once again. So let's uh, just uh, learn how to do this final round and let's begin that one next. So in the final round is just like the other ones that we have done with the decrease. So what's we're gonna happen is that the, we're gonna chain one and then the first two are together. Okay, you already know how to do that and then the next two are by themselves. Okay, so the next two are together and then the next two are by themselves. Okay, so please do that all the way around and this will conclude off ring number three and I'll be right back and we'll just finish this off and then we'll move on to ring number four. So I'm coming up to the final end and the final two will be two single crochets if you're keeping it in balance. So you're just gonna slip stitch it to the top as usual. You're gonna move your stitch marker as usual but now you're finished with black until you come again to the fifth round. So let's uh, just trim this off. It's like we did before. Just trim it and then hide it in. So just pull this loop up and just weave it in to the top edge. So we're now going to move on to the fourth round which is very similar if not the same as the fifth round. So uh, we're going to be really excited about that and let's continue along and move on to the next round. Okay, so let's move on to the fourth ring and in this ring we're going to get to the final diameter and then work our way up as we approach the fifth and final ring. So let's crochet. So let's move along to the fourth round. In fourth round we're gonna have another increase. So what's happened in the last round is that we decreased in the last one. We're gonna start off the first one by doing an increase but also in this round uh, after this we're gonna increase it one more time uh, in this particular ring and then we're gonna continue with the single crochet all the way around. Let's create a slip knot and let's uh, insert your hook right into there. Remember the stitch marker area doesn't count as a stitch. It's the one right over just right beside it. And let's just join it and if you've been following this long you'll, you'll know exactly where that is. Lay down your straggler as always. Chain one. Okay and so then this one here is like it was before in the other ones when we did the increase 
right when we joined on a new color. It's gonna be the same thing as what we did before. So it's going to be two single crochets into the first one and then the next two are two single crochets by themselves. Lay down that straggler and get it right up over top of it so that it gets stuck underneath the stitches. Okay, so there's two by themselves. The next one is two into the same one. So that's the repeat pattern all the way around this thing. So two into the same and then two by themselves. Please do that for this entire round. So in keeping with the pattern all the way around the final two are just single crochets and then you just join it to the top of the beginning. And I'm gonna move up my stitch marker just to make it easier for myself. And what I want to do then is that we are going to do another increase to get the circle to be even bigger. Now for those that have done the shark uh, sack with us and the other ones that we have, this one actually has a wider mouth at the top for probably an older child uh, just to be aware of that because the shark I believe was 80 um, stitches all the way around. We're now going to hit so that it's 112 so it is a much difference. Um, that's why it takes up more yarn as well. So let's begin. We're going to do the next round and we're gonna do an increase. Remember in the last round when we were here in the black that we did 11 single crochets in a row and then two into the next one. So we're gonna continue that same path but now um, because we're now even bigger we're now gonna continue this way. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put two into the same one and then the next 12 are gonna be by themselves. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, And then we have 9, 10, 11 and 12. So now that your 12 are in the next one is gonna have two into the same one and then again another 12 by themselves and then two into the next. Please do that all the way around for this round. So I'm coming up to the end of this round and you should have 12 single crochets in a row in order to join it to the top of the beginning. So we're going to move on to the next part of the ring and all of it is just single crochet now for another 12 inches like you already know. So let's just join it to the top there. Okay, so you're all you're just gonna do now again like you did with the black is that we're not increasing any more in this but I need you to get this yellow now to be 12 inches and then when we come back on this particular ring we're not only gonna decrease once uh, like we had over here but we're gonna decrease twice in order to do that and then we are then gonna move up. So let's uh, continue along in this journey and I need you to do single crochets now up until the point of, of 12 inches for this yellow. So we'll be back and I'll see you in just a moment. Through the miracle of filming I now have it complete so I've been working on it quietly behind the scenes. So I left you over here. I've got 12 inches done and now ring number four finishes different from the other rings and the reason for that is that ring number five is the same width all the way across and because of that we're gonna decrease twice and then increase twice then when we come and do the fifth ring because it's the same size it has more of an indentation to make it look uh, a little more believable because here when we did this one here we were getting bigger anyway as the project grew and therefore this indentation would look different here if it's treated the same way. So let's say uh, get the final two rounds done and this is ring number four. So this decrease is different from the ones that we've been doing over here. Okay, so this first one is slightly different and we're going to chain up one and we're going to do two together. So the first one that we do we're gonna pull through and the next one are two together and this time then going all the way across is that we are going to do 12 um, single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, eleven, and twelve. So once you get your twelve in there the next ones are two together. So please do that all the way across. So twelve single crochets in a row and then the next two are together and please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of this round and the final 
should be 12 single crochets in a row. I've already pre-counted before filming this uh, segment so I know that there's 12 here so I can chat. So just get this done. We got one more round to go and then yellow is done and then we're gonna finish off with the yellow and the next time you're gonna use the yellow then is just on the tip of the wings in order to do that. So we're just gonna finish this one off. Go, uh, go up to the first single crochet. Move up your stitch marker. I've been pretty good about that for this whole project and move along and let's do the final round of the yellow. So the final round of the yellow is just like we've been treating with the black areas as we've been finishing off. So this time it is chain one and bring the first two together and then two singles in a row. So one and two and the next one is together and then two singles in a row. Please do that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this revolution. So in keeping with the pattern the final two are just gonna be um, two sing uh, one single crochet each. So that's it for the yellow. The next time we're gonna use this now will be on the wings so you're just gonna have to leave that yellow aside. I want you to finish it off like you did before. We're gonna start round our ring number five next. Ring number five is the final. You're noticing how big this uh, particular item is. It's actually a lot bigger in person than I expected it to be. So we're just gonna weave in the ends and we're gonna move up to ring number five next. Okay so we're almost at the finish line for doing the body. So let's move up to the fifth and final ring and we're gonna do something slightly different right at the very end but it's not a big deal. You can do this and it's going to be the same diameter as the fourth ring so we just have to create that little bit of bulge and then just continue and finish this off. Sounds more complicated than it is but let's get going. So let's quickly review the ring five. The fifth ring is right here. Now the fifth ring and the fourth ring are very similar to each other. The only difference is, is that the ending right here on the fourth ring is different from the ending over here. The only difference is, is that there's one instruction missing which is the two single crochet together and then two single crochets in a row. That's what's missing on this one here. But everything else in the fourth round is the same as in here. So we're gonna do another 12 inches then of this and we need to increase twice just like this so we're following the same instructions for here. Now you're thinking to yourself why did we decrease twice here when we've only decreased once in the rest of them? The difference is, is that this diameter and this diameter are the same. So what's gonna happen is that we're decreasing twice to create that over look feeling because what's happened here is when we decrease we bulge out even more to make it bigger. We're here because it's the same diameter we are increasing more to create that, that bulge that we have along the bee's body. So without further ado let's move along to the fifth ring. So I'm bringing back the black. I'm gonna create a slip knot first and I'm going to start right where I have my stitch marker. So remember the stitch marker is where it's slip stitched so I'm starting the one over. Okay so we're going to begin to do that first and what I want to do is just join it with the slip stitch and we're going to do the increasing like we had done on number four in this particular one. So the last one if you remember we did two single crochets together and then two by themselves. So in this round what we're doing is we're doing the opposite to this. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put two single crochets into the first one. Lay this down on top so that it gets stuck underneath. So that was one and two like so and then the next two are by themselves. So one and two. Okay so the next ones are two into the same one. So one and two. It's always a little difficult to always do things with these stragglers um, when we're starting off things so just uh, be aware of that. So the next two are by themselves. So just one single crochet and I keep burying in that loose end until I run out of yarn really with that. And then the next one's two. So please continue that same pattern going all the way around. So two into one and then the next two are by themselves. And I buried this in enough so I'm just gonna trim it out and take that away and continue. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So you're gonna finish off then with two into the same and one single crochet into each of the final two. And then you're back to where you are. So just join it to the top of the first single crochet. Again I know it's black. I know it's hard to see. Unfortunately bees are not a different color than that. Well at least the ones that we're doing today. So let's move on. We're gonna do one more increase and then you're back to single crochet for your 12 inches of space. Let's move along to round number two. So round number two is just like the fourth ring and we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put two into the first one 
So one and two and this time then there will be 12 single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So now that 12 are there, the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So one and two. So continue that same pattern going all the way around. By the way, when I'm crocheting this uh, off camera, because my table is so small, my balls are really qu are quite close to the project. So therefore they keep getting sucked into my project. That doesn't usually happen when I'm crocheting on my own. So let's uh, continue. So just remember 12 single crochets in a row and then two into the next one. So 12 and then two, 12 and two. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. There's two into that one and I'm just finished. So I'm coming up all the way around. I've already put in my two and the final 12 are just one single crochet each. Uh, I've actually counted already uh, just before taping just to make sure that there was 12 here. So what we're going to do then next is that the remainder of this cocoon now is just single crochet up for 12 inches and then we're gonna meet back and we're gonna do one decrease only and then the cocoon itself is done. Uh, for this B and uh, so then we can move along to the end the process. So please uh, just uh, once you get in here just attach it to the first single crochet with a slip stitch. Move up your stitch marker if you wish. Right underneath so that it helps you. I like the stitch markers. It really gives me a really clear indication where to stop and start with this thing and continue. So please can now get 12 inches done from this point all the way to the top and then meet me back here and we'll do one decrease and then we'll continue along in this project for going to the wings next. So now we're back. I have this done and now I'm ready for my final round which is gonna decrease it. So if you remember from the fourth ring here we decreased it twice and if you look at the instructions we're only gonna decrease once. So this time what we're going to do then on the final round before we're done this whole cocoon self itself is that we're going to chain up one and what we're going to do is then put in two together for the first two and then there's gonna be 12 single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So once you get your twelve done then just the next two are together. Okay so do that all the way around and then once you get this round done you're completely done on the cocoon and then we're gonna move on to the wings after that. So do this round and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm keeping with the pattern and I'm just going all the way along then. The finals are going to be single crochets, the final 12. And then what we're going to do then is that I'm gonna show you how to weave in the ends using a darning needle. In this case this is the final edge where the child will grab onto in order to slip inside. And so you want this final um, tail end to be nice and secure in. So you're just gonna slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet like you had been all along. So here it is with my stitch marker and there you go. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to trim this off. Okay and I'm just gonna leave it about 12 inches or so. Okay and I'm just gonna pull up and pull this through. Okay so I'm gonna remove my stitch marker cause I can. So that's out and I'm gonna grab a darning needle. In the darning needle I'm gonna slip it in to the needle and you want to go in and out three times. So my biggest thing is that if you go in and out of the project three times then it can last. So you're gonna go in. So you're just gonna go underneath the stitches. Just use your fingers kind of making sure it's staying in the middle and then coming out about an inch or so. About an inch, two inches and then pull through. So when you pull through you don't want to reef on it so that it loses its flexibility in the sense that you look like it buckles. And then you're gonna go in and go back in the other direction through a different path because if you go in the same path it'll fall out. So different direction. This is number two and then going back in final through another path for number three. So your project can never stretch in three different directions at the same time to fall out. So if you go in and out three times just like so this tail end will never fall out of your work. Okay, so now that it's in I can safely just cut it right down to the project 
and other than the slip stitch then catching your eye you would never know that you finished your work right here. So this is the conclusion of doing the cocoon itself without doing the wing. So here's the top where the child slips into and then you can see then we went to yellow and then we went back to black as we work our way back down and we were at yellow and then the very final then with the stinger was black. So this is really cool and this is the side with the slip stitching but do you see it? Now it's kind of not hard because it's done on this side. It's actually on the other side. Let me show you what it looks like for the slip stitching. It's all the way down and a solid line all the way. Do you see it's almost invisible and it's perfect because you don't want your slip stitching to be that obvious anyway. So this is how you do this part. Let's move on to the next part where we're gonna start exploring the wings next. Now that the body is complete we're going to move up into the small wing. The small wing has a complementary crochet diagram including the large wing as well and it'll accompany it with the words and the diagram so that you can see where the stitches are going to go. I'm going to do my best to explain the stitches as they go and the entire wing will be filmed through the step. This sounds a lot more complicated than it is and if you know how to read crochet diagrams or even read patterns I think this will be a great asset but of course you can follow along as well. So let's begin to do the small wing together. So the large wing and the small wing are very similar to each other. In fact the white area that you see here is actually the same stitch work that you see here in the big one. The fact is is that there's more rounds in the big one to make it bigger. So it actually makes a lot of sense when you, you see it from that point of view. And we're also going to be reducing our hook now for it's a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today and we're going to examine this pattern now. I have the diagram available that's available in this pattern and I've dissected it to be able to teach you how to do these wings. So let's move along to the small wing. So what you're looking at here is the crochet diagram that's available inside the pattern and I've dissected it to giving you key elements to what to look for when it comes to this. So if you've never done crochet patterns before like this then I'm going to show you how to read this because I want to show you the similarities of what is happening inside this pattern so that you can read it a lot easier. I have to say that the use of stitch markers and etc. for the wings is really critical for this particular pattern. Um, you will see that it will make a lot of sense as we continue. So let me show you a little bit more about this pattern and then we're going to dive into the actual handwork after that. So here is the pattern diagram and you can see it's going in a complete circle. Okay so every time we get back around we have a dot which means it's a slip stitch and there's a diagram key available in the pattern as well for you to be able to follow. So we're going to start off by chaining of 10 and then we're going to do a single crochet second chain from the hook and then work our way back across the chain and at the end of this chain we're going to put 7 and we're going to rotate it and come around the underside of the chain to create the circle. So the middle of the circle is actually this chain that you see here. So what's gonna happen is that every rotation that we go around is gonna get bigger and bigger around here. So this time it was seven. The next time it's going to be uh, uh, branching off. There will be three and then one by itself and then three, one by itself and then three and then continuing. So here's the trick. As you're getting bigger this distance of going around gets bigger. So just think about track and field when you were a kid and you were put, put in a certain line in the track and you realize that the, on the outside you'd have to run a lot far, farther than the people that run in the middle. Because of that fact is that the crochet works very much in the same way. So when you see here you see two double crochets by itself and then you do the seven. The next one there's three double crochets by itself and then you're starting the stitch work. There's four. There's five. So what I have here is the number of the uh, double crochet increases the further out that you get. And when you look at it this is like a, 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 a pond. So what this is kind of like the line in the pond and this is a reflection that you see down here. So what is happening up here is happening down here. So why have I highlighted these particular lines here and ended it flat here? Well that's pretty simple. Let me tell you why. So we talked about the pattern being a reflection. So here is the water line here and what's happening up here is happening down here. So when you're doing this pattern and you're reading the instructions it doesn't feel that way but when you see it in a diagram format just like so you can completely see that the stitches are completely lined up to each other. So what's going to happen is that we are starting off and let's look at line number three. So it says three single crochets in the first, three half double crochets and then four double crochets and right where this is branching off and this happens in all of the lines where it starts is that it will say three double crochets in the next stitch 
and then one double crochet in the next and repeat that five times. That's what it will say for this particular line. So then if you repeat that five times, so you got one, two, three, four, and five and because of that you end up right here. Okay, so this is where the pattern then picks back up and it will say three double crochets into the next and say three half doubles into the next and three singles in the next and then you'll run back into the outside over here. So this is an easy way to be able to tell uh, this particular pattern when you're working on it. So what I did for myself is that I blew this diagram up even more. And what I did is that with the stitch marker or sorry with a highlighter I just highlighted where it starts to branch off to give me clues on what I'm looking for. What's with these? Do you see those? Those are not all the way down because they don't start branching off until this round. So when you looked at it from this perspective here you'll see that in round number three this is when those got introduced. So these five, one, two, three, four, five, the five branches, the two right here and here do not start until round number three. And so that, that just makes it easier. Now when you're looking at the bigger pattern for example you're looking at um, the one that for the large wings all this is this line is gone the outside because that's the border for the small wings and then there's two more rows that are added on and when you follow it back out this is just even bigger so it's just a lot easier to be able to function. Also when you're working with this you're going to notice that there's a constant. So the constant is is that these three half double crochets and three, three single crochets both sides of the water line okay are always constant. See how they're matching up with each other and don't worry about this outside border. Okay those don't match. Don't worry about that because it's just right here right from right to round number four is where you need to worry about and that makes sense. Then on the outside what's gonna happen is that we're going to stu do exactly kind of what we've done here but this is a smaller looking circle. So when I bl blow it up just like so it, we're coming all the way around again it's going to start branching off. So this is what's constant. Everything from here down is constant and this is the semicircle. and when you're following it around it just makes a lot more sense if you can just highlight it and map it out for yourself in order to speed yourself up. So this is a great little uh, tool to be able to kind of work out as things become uh, a little bit complicated. Doing this kind of pattern is really kind of hard just reading the instructions alone. So the designers have provided this pattern. You can see that the way that I marked it up and the larger one is very similar. Let me give you a preview of the larger one because then you know what you're in for for the next one. So here is what the larger one looks like. So the larger one looks very similar to it. So round number four is where the wing of the small stops but round number four here is the exact same round. So everything is the exact same but rounds number five and six are now added to it and all it is is just bigger. There's more double crochets to get there. There's more double crochets in the middle that separate this whole group of five that we have and what we have is we have our constant of of this areas of the half double crochets and single crochets all lining up. Again don't worry about this outside edge that's different and then we end up in the section at the, at the base where it's just getting bigger and bigger. So I've highlighted everything in the fuchsia with just a single crochet that sits by itself and the other ones had two double crochets into the same stitch. And when you look at it from this perspective you can see how it's growing quite nicely as you go all the way around. So when you look at it from this perspective it's almost like a deer's antlers. It's all gonna match. So what's happening on one side of the water line here is happening on the other. And when you can see this particular pattern done in this perspective then it gets a lot easier to be able to function. So let's uh, try our work. You're gonna need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today and let's begin the small wing and the small wing is this one and again this pattern is available to for you online in order to mark it up if you need to. So let's begin. We're gonna start right in the middle here and work our way back around. The usage of stitch markers are huge. Let me oh yeah let me tell you a little bit about that too and I'll be right back. So here's what one of the wings look like. What does look similar when you look at them side by side? The stitch markers. So the stitch markers what I did is that I put the stitch markers in where, where the middle is of the groups of three just like you see on both sides and I left them in just to show you that I did that. I also did a stitch marker along the base here in order for me to follow as I went all the way around. These stitch markers really help me a lot because it shows me every time I'm moving up in a particular pattern is that whenever I hit a stitch marker I know that the next group of three that are gonna sit into the same stitch is right at that stitch marker. So when I follow it up for example 
you follow it up here. See this is the middle of a group of three like so and then you do the same thing. This is the middle Here's the stitch marker once again and then I've done it right to the end. I didn't really need to go right to the end but I did it for tutorial reasons and I also did this for the bigger version of the stitch markers just like so. So all it is it's different. So look at the size difference. Okay this is just a smaller one. It's just sitting uh, inside and because there's two extra rows to, in order to make it bigger. So when you look at it from this perspective. So what I want you to do is that I want you to grab six of these stitch markers. They're just uh, spare yarn about 12 inches long. Uh, get them a nice color and we're gonna be using those and I'm gonna show you how to use those in order to keep count. They will save your life on this particular project. I think uh, they'll come in quite handy for you. Okay so let's begin and I have six stitch markers just just spare yarn and uh, they're just about 12 inches long. For tutorial reasons I cannot use white here on the background because you'll never see it uh, once I remove uh, the stitch markers you'll never be able to see the stitch work. So I'm gonna use pink and I've already done my wings in advance so that I could understand this pattern as well. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with this slip knot to begin and we're going to chain 10. So remember six and a half size K crochet hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there's your starting chain. So what we want to do now is that we want to come back along the chain, zip around the back side and come up on, on the underside. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So we'll count back one and two and I want you to single crochet into that one and before you move on I want you to put one stitch marker in right into that same stitch that you just did. This will represent when you're coming back around it will help you give a good indication of when you're back around. I tried doing this pattern without stitch markers. These will save your life. So what I want you to do now is that there's gonna be one single crochet in the next two. So one and two. Okay so there's your constant that we talked about. The next three are going to be half double crochets. So there's your next constant. So that will never change its position when you're working on these things. So there's three half double crochets in a row. And now we're gonna do two uh, double crochets in a row. Okay for this one this is coming along the chain and you're left with one stitch. Well that one stitch is going to be the one that loops around the back. So in the next, so the last stitch we want to put a total of seven double crochets that go into that one. So we've got one and let's put all seven in and then we'll, I'll show you the trick. So we got two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So stop here. Do not go any further. What I want you to do is that we've got a total of seven and I showed you in the chart and let me pull that chart up for you again and let me show you what, where you are. So here you are in the chart and you have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I want us to do is that I want us to put three stitch markers in strategically on the second one, the middle one and this one here, the sixth one. So what we're doing is we're establishing where this is gonna be branching out then from this point. So that's what we're up to. So let's look at this and all seven, if you pull it back, all seven will be right there. Okay? Just like there. So the second one what I want you to do is stick your needle back into the top of the stitch and grab a spare stitch marker and pull it through. Not all the way through obviously just leave it hanging there and then I want you to skip one go to the next one. This is the middle one and grab another stitch marker. Again just pull a portion of it through and then come in to skip one and go to the one just before the end. Okay so this is the last one. Go to the second one over and that will represent the three spokes that you can currently can see at this particular size and we're gonna have a total of five eventually as we move around. So now you have the outsides marked and now we're gonna continue down the side of the chain. So jumping over to the next chain here we want to and see how I just turned it. 
Okay, so we're now on the underside of it. So we're gonna uh, do two double crochets in a row. So just working in the chain. So one and two. This is two in a row. And now the three du half double crochets are next and that's your constant. Okay, so that will never change. So you got one, two and three. And now we're gonna finish off with some single crochets. So the next two are going to be one single crochet each. So one and two. And the final one that you have here is going to have two single crochets in. So one and two. And I want you to join it to the top of the first stitch marker that you started with and now what's happened is is that that two plus this one now equals the three that's on the edge of your particular wing. So let's uh, move up and let's do round number two. Well the counts are certainly very important and so what I did off camera when I was doing this particular pattern is that I would count back. So sometimes I would chain up one and then I wasn't sure where the single crochet should go. It should go directly into the same one but sometimes you get a little confused. So what I did for myself is that I looked to the stitch marker okay and then I went backward. So I, I counted back in order to get it. So there's three double crochets, three half double crochets and three singles in order to do that. You may think it's kind of a crazy way to do that but sometimes you can start up and all of a sudden you you didn't start here like you should have and you're one uh, late and so when you're looking for at this and using this as the key to count back to starting it makes a huge difference because there's nothing worse than getting all this way and realizing that you don't have enough stitch work. So um, that's just something I did for myself and hopefully that will help you out as well. So when looking at my sample and counting back the way that I did is that the middle one is represented by the stitch marker. So I know that I have three double crochets that need to go in there. So I count one, two, three. I know that I have three half double crochets, one, two and three and then three single crochets, one, two and three. So this one here is my starting. So I just do that just as a verification. So you're gonna just chain one and then begin in the first one and you're going to single crochet and before you do anything just move up that stitch marker. So just coming up underneath the stitch and just pow, pull through that stitch marker to help you see that at the end. With this fluffy yarn it's not always easy and so it's just a little uh, tip and it doesn't take you that long. So you're gonna single crochet into the next two. So one and two. So that's part of your constant. The next three are half double crochets. So one, two, and three. The next three are double crochets. So one, two and three and look at that. So we're at the stitch right before that stitch marker which indicates that's the middle of the spoke. So, in the so we now have three double crochets right before the stitch marker. So the stitch marker indicates to us where we are and that's the one that's gonna have three double crochets in it and then the next one is gonna be by itself. Three double crochets into this one and then by itself. So the repeat pattern is a total of three times. So what I want you to do in the next one with the stitch marker you're gonna put in three double crochets. So one and watch what I do. This will help you. Two and three. In the third one that you are sorry in the middle one of the three that you just did okay just pull this out. So it's not the last one but in the middle I want you to stick the needle from the back or the hook from the back and pull a portion of that stitch marker through. That is the new middle of this particular stitch. The next one is one single crochet by itself. And then the next stitch has a stitch marker again which indicates that's another spoke. So there's gonna be three into that one as well. So one, two and three and then I want you to go to the middle one of those three again. So just not this one, it's the second one back and pull a portion of that stitch marker through and that will indicate the next time you run back into that space. The next one is one single crochet or one double crochet by itself and then you're back on a stitch marker once again. 
So there's gonna be three into that one. So one, two, and three. Again, move that stitch marker up to the middle one of those three. And then for the repeat pattern, it's one double crochet into the next. So it's like the highlighting showed you. So this was the end of the repeat pattern as you went all the way around. So let's carry on and we're going to continue. The next two are going to be uh, one double crochet each. One and two. The next three are half double crochets. So one, two, three. That's part of your constant. The next three on this one here is going to be one single crochet each. So one, two, and three. And your one stitch right before the stitch marker which is your last stitch and there's going to be three single crochets into that same stitch. And then I want you to slip stitch to where that one is in the black and before you move forward move that stitch marker right up underneath that as well. The new section and then you have that marked. So that was round number two and this is kind of what's going on here. So you can kind of see how everything is kind of working out. So as we move up to round number three, we're gonna then get bigger and bigger. So this time there's gonna be four double crochets before we start this. Now these ones right in the middle, round number three is when we're gonna start the new branches that are gonna make up these ones that are right here. Okay, and it's just easy to tell. It's the one that's right in the middle. So there's gonna be three stitches by themselves. It's the one right in the middle that ends up branching in to the new section just like you see and we'll be adding stitch markers at that point coming all the way around. Again, we're just going to continue and this time there's gonna be more branching off here on the outside. So we're gonna finish with two double crochets into one, three into the next, two into the next and then slip stitch to the beginning. Let's begin this round number three. So as I start now round number three, I like to count back as I mentioned before. So here's the stitch marker and I saw in the pattern that there's four double crochets that stand by itself this time. So I count back starting at the next one. So one, two, three and four. There's gonna be three half doubles in a row. One, two, three and then three singles. One, two and three. So I'm back to where I've started. Um, I found this quite handy to do because sometimes you can get confused. So we're gonna chain up one and starting right where we are, we're going to put three single crochets in a row. So one, two, three. The next ones are three halves in a row. So one, two, and three. And then this time in round number three there's gonna be four double crochets that sit by themselves. So one, two, and three. and four. So four by themselves right here and then we're gonna start going around the outside. So right where the stitch marker is, that's where we're gonna start branching off and doing the repeat pattern. So in this one here we're going to put three double crochets into the same stitch. Again move up that stitch marker once you have those three in, move it to the middle one. You'll thank yourself if you're doing it this way. Okay, the next one is going to be one double crochet by itself and the next one is going to be three double crochets there. Okay, into that one. So we've got one, two, and three. So this is the new branching off section. So in the middle one of the three, add another stitch marker. Just like there. Okay, one double crochet into the next and now you're into the middle section here and there's the stitch marker so that must mean there's three in this one. So one, two, and three. Okay, move that stitch marker to the middle one of the three. Okay, one double crochet into the next. Next one is a new branch. So there's gonna be three double crochets here. So one, two, 
and three. Again the middle one of the three. Grab your final stitch marker that you've been saving. So you have a total of five of them in now. And then the next one is one double crochet by itself. And then the final here, this is a stitch marker so there's gotta be three in this one too. So one, two, and three. Move that stitch marker to the middle one of the three. And to finish the repeat pattern on this particular one, it is one double crochet by itself. And then we're gonna start moving down the other side. So you see what we have here when we look at it? So we have the first one, here's the new branch. We have the next one, okay, the, here's the new branch for the next one here and then the final. So let's move down this side. There's gonna be three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. Okay, here's your constant coming up which is your half double crochets. There's gonna be three of those. So one, two, and three. Okay, you're gonna have three single crochets in a row. That's your, still your constant. So one, two, and three. And now as we make our way around the outside, there's three stitches left. So the next stitch is gonna have two singles. So one and two. The next stitch is gonna have three singles. So one, two, and three. And the final stitch available to you is gonna be two singles. So one and two. And I want you to join it to the uh, to the top of the first single crochet. Just like so. So that was round number three. So this is what it looks like so far. I'm back to the diagram and now we're gonna go for round number four. So we have our constant for number four. This time there's gonna be five double crochets by itself and then we start the branching. So right where we have our slip our, our stitch markers is where it's gonna continue to branch off into three. So really you can think about it from this perspective and this will help you with the large one too is that really if, if there's no stitch marker then you just put one and if there's a stitch marker you put in three and then you continue to move your stitch marker up uh, into the middle one as you see as you come all the way around and as we come all the way around you're just gonna follow. So there's going to be in this time three double crochets that sit by themselves between the groups of five right up to the end and then we start coming back around and then we have a little bit more branching off happening on the end. And then the next round after that is the border and the small wing is then complete. So we're now gonna begin round number four. So again I like to count back. So I know that there's five double crochets that sit uh, like one after the, the other here. So this is the middle one so I start the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, three halves, one, two, three, three singles, one, two, and three. So I'm back to where I've started and that really gives me an indication to make sure I'm on the right track. So we're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into each of the next three. Okay, and then there's gonna be three halves in the next. I found when I was doing this, um, when I was not counting back like that, I was just getting the wrong stitch. I don't know what was wrong with me, but it helps me verify that and I think it's a great little tip. So now we're gonna have five double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five and the next one should be the stitch marker which it is. So let's make our way around. So the next one is gonna be three um, double crochets. You don't really need to move up the stitch marker at this point. It doesn't matter from this point forward in this particular size. If it was a larger one I would say absolutely. So I'm just gonna leave it where it is. The next three are gonna be by itself. So three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next one where the stitch marker is gonna be three into that one. So one, two, 
and three and I'm not gonna move up the stitch marker. The next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the next one is the stitch marker. So pull that back and there's gonna be three double crochets in that one. One, two, and three. The next one is three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next one is the stitch marker. There's gonna be three double crochets into that one. So one, two, and three. It's gonna be three double crochets into that, uh, into the next, one double crochet into the next three. So one, two, and three. And here's your last stitch marker. So do you see how the stitch markers kinda help me kind of keep orientation? It's sometimes easier to have those visual cues than it is to count and making sure that I did repeat five times as it says in the pattern. Just look for those stitch markers. And then you're gonna double crochet in the next three to finish that repeat pattern off for that as we come around. And now we're gonna start coming along the side of the, out there. So the repeat pattern's been done. You can see that everything's been kind of worked out. And so now what we're going to do as we continue is that the next two will be one double crochet each. One and two. Okay, the next uh, three are going to be half double crochet. Here's your constant. So one, two, and three. Okay, and then your next three are by themselves of single crochet. So one, two, and three. So that's your constant done. We still have to work our way around the bottom side. So what we have here, the first one is gonna be two single crochets. So one and two. The next one is a one single crochet by itself. The next one is one sing or two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. The next one is one single crochet by itself. The next one is two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. The next one is one single crochet by itself. And the final one is two single crochets into the same one. Like so. And just look at the pattern. You'll see that it all works out. And then you just join it to the top of the first um, single crochet. So this concludes how to do the wings except for we need to add the border to it which is round number five. So what I wanna do is I wanna add the final border. So I'm gonna trim off the white like so and I'm just gonna pull it through. I'm just gonna weave it in. Don't uh, refund that too much. Um, you'll distort it so just kinda keep it nice and loose and the next time you go around it you're gonna hide this particular strand in. So you're gonna notice it's kinda buckling like it's in my hands and so at the end of this you can use a wet, uh, just make it damp and then just lay it down and block. Um, I have to say I blocked mine. Okay this is kinda the same thing. And what I want to do is I wanna remove out the stitch markers. They don't matter at this point. You can save those for the next one. And I can trim off this one that I was weaving in. And so now we're going to begin doing the border. So just give it a few good stretches and then you can just wet block it uh, just down. So just damp it up a bit. Lay it like this upside down force it down and out and just let it uh, just kind of dry out. I used a steamer as well so I just did that down. Okay so let's move along and do the fifth round. So here we go with the fifth round and the fifth round is really quite simple. We're gonna start up and we're going to just do uh, four single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and then two into the next and then right from this point then it's gonna be five single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five and then two. One, two, three, four, five and then two. Five and two. Five and two and at the end you're gonna end up with uh, two single crochets into the same and then the final is one single crochet that sits by itself before you join it to begin. So we're just gonna start here and work our way around. This is really quite a no brainer round. Okay so let's begin and I'm going to just start exactly where I finished off. Okay and it's right there. Insert the hook. Do not tie a loop or anything like this. Uh, just 
just leave it like this and just insert into the into the project. So there's no slip knot at all. Chain up one and you're gonna do one single crochet into that one. Leave this straggler down on top so that it gets stuck underneath and I want you to do three, sorry, four single crochets in a row. So that was one. Just move along the outside. Two and three four. Okay, so we got four now here. The next one is gonna be two single crochets into the same one. So your repeat pattern for the remainder of this particular project, let me just get this one done, is five double crochet, or single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then two single crochets into the next. So continue that same idea all the way around. So uh, five singles in a row and then two into the next and I'll see you at the end of this round. So as I come up all the way around, I got two stitches left. This one is uh, keeping within the pattern so it's two singles into the same one. And then the final stitch is just one single by itself and then you're just going to attach it to the beginning single crochet. You will find that this particular round will stabilize this round, uh, stabilize these wings and make them relax and sit better and uh, it'll make a world of difference when you go to block these at the end. So this is the conclusion and you'll wanna use a darning needle like I've demonstrated before just hiding in your stitches and this is a really great concept. So you're gonna dampen this. You can put like a wet rag over it and just let it absorb a little bit of water. Then lay it down with the face down. Make sure it's clean underneath and just kind of force it and let it sit and dry just like so. I used a steamer and so you'll have a lot better results when you look at it from a, um, once it's been steamed and it will sit nicely. So is there a difference of right and left? Absolutely not. So it, depending on how you position it on the B, this could be the, the right side. Position it this way it could be the left. And so this just makes a really kind of a neat concept and you need to do two of these and then when we come back we're gonna start the large wings next. So this is how to do the smaller wings. So one more step to complete is the larger wing. So you need to do two small wings, two big wings and then you're good to go. So the smaller wing is very similar to the larger wing. There's just a few more rounds and you can do this and once you understand the steps that were involved in moving the stitch markers around, you can see how quickly that you can make these wings at the same time. So let's get going. I'm making the larger wing. So let's move along to Number seven, the large wing is the final that we have to do in order to bring this whole bee into conclusion. Now the large wing and the small wing like I've already explained in section number six is that it's the same thing except for there's a few extra rows that are adding to it. So when we did the small one we just had this here and so then the larger one is much bigger. Well, I wouldn't say much bigger. It's, it's a couple rounds more bigger and see if you sit them inside you can see the difference of the sizing. It's not too significant but the concepts are uh, the same of uh, the way that we're gonna do it and because they're very similar it makes it quite easy to follow. So if I were you make sure you do both the, the small at the same time and then do the large at the same time. It just makes it a lot easier to follow. So I have a chart and let's go through that next. So in section number six we had the small wing just like you see here and there was four rounds that went all the way around and then the fifth round was the border that went all the way around. Okay, so rounds just like this. Okay, so what we have here is that the fifth round is being removed off of the large one and being changed to something different in order to make this happen. Again, the spokes are the same just like we did here. It's the same thing. So let's show you the other one that we have. So here's the larger version. So you can count on rounds number one through four being the exact same as the wing, the small wing, but now we have five, six, and seven as, as five and six are different and then number seven is similar to the border on the first one. There's just more stitches uh, between each of the ones that have a double. So let's explain this a little bit more in detail for those that are skipping ahead and just needing help with this one. So the diagram is available on yarnspirations.com. It will not have all this marking up. This is just for helping me to teach you on how to do this. So what we're gonna do is that just like the small one, we're gonna start off in the middle and go around and we're gonna do our rounds just like we did up until round number four. So round number five, we continue the story and again, it's like the other one. So the double crochets are increasing in the spaces in order to compensate for the circle. Just think about it like a track and field race where you're stuck in one of these and that you have 
have to go. So if you're in the next one you have to go a little bit further so you have to add on extra stitches in order to make that turn. So what we have constant all the way including this one up until the very final round. So number seven is not included in that constant but the first three are always single crochet. The next three are always half double crochet and just think about like the mirror of the water like the reflection. What's happening up here is happening down here. Okay so then these three half double crochets are constant and these three single crochets are constant. So what is really changing here is everything on this side of the border and then everything on this side. So what's gonna happen is that as we're getting bigger and bigger we have double crochet increases. So we had here in the very beginning remember we had two then we had three, we had four, five, six and seven and because of that we're increasing it and these are gonna be increasing as well. Now just like we did on the, the small wing the number three here, see this spoke here does not start until we get to round number three. So it's not, doesn't exist way down here. That's why you see it kind of marked up partial and this one here as well. So when we go to start this you see that I marked the three in the middle. So this one will spoke out, the middle one will spoke out, this one will spoke out and then the, in round three these will then pick up. So what I did for the highlighting, what does that mean? Why is it flat? flatter here than it is here. Well when we go to start it's gonna say three single crochets in the next, three half doubles in the next and then it's gonna tell you the number of double crochets before the repeat pattern starts. So let's say we're doing round number six. So round number six it'll say by the time we finish the double crochets here it'll say three double crochets in, in the next and then it will say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and it will say seven double crochets in a row and repeat that a total of five times. So you have your repeat of one, two, three, four and five and you notice here see that it's still spoking out here but you have to repeat the pattern. So this is where it leaves you before then you come back around. So even though you're starting later for the repeat it ends pretty much at the same spot right down here and then we're gonna adjust and then come around and do the back end. So let's talk about the back end really quick. So it's just like the small one so let me turn it just to make it look easier. It looks the same. So what's happening on this side of the center line is the same as what's happening on the other and as soon as you can identify that it makes it so much easier to follow. So you can freeze to frame this uh, video if you would like to. If you'd like to mark up the chart in order to help you it helps me a lot and we're gonna be using stitch markers like we did in the sixth, uh, the small, sw small wings because honestly those stitch markers will make this so much easier for you um, and it took me about one hour to be able to do one wing and that's because I'm counting and I'm taking my time to do it. You can probably do it quicker and if you do leave a comment here on the, f on Facebook or YouTube if you can do it even quicker than I can. I like to take my time and move my stitch markers around. The stitch markers honestly saved my life on this particular project because it gets really difficult uh, especially when you get bigger. Have you done your five? Have you done your repeats? And have you done them, not, uh, done them enough? And then you start questioning life and then it becomes a real issue from that point. So let's uh, start and let's begin to do this uh, and let's take our time and I'm going to be following each round individually step by step as we go. So there's not gonna be any fast forwarding going on in this particular uh, section of the video. So let's begin round number one. So we're gonna start off with the chinning of ten. We're then going to put a stitch marker here. So I need you to make a total of six stitch markers. Just a spare yarns fine. Make sure that you can see it when you're using it. So don't use the same color. That's what I'm saying. And we're gonna come around and then we're gonna zip around here and then come around the underside like we did with the small wing and then come back and that will be round number one. Let's move along and let's try it. Okay let's begin. You need a size K, six and a half millimeter crochet hook. For obvious reasons I have a white background. You cannot see a white wing on this thing. So I'm using a different color and I've already got my wings done in advance so I could learn how to do this pattern as well. Let's start off with a slip knot and let's begin and I need you to chain ten. Okay so let's go and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So let's uh, start working our way around and let's go second chain from the hook. So one and two just count it back. So one and two and insert into the back chain only or the back uh, loop and just single crochet but hold it. I want you to put one of those stitch markers right in right there. It'll help you identify just like it did with the small wing. You wanna help yourself as much as possible. So this is the, where we're gonna stop and start these projects when we go around. 
So let's uh, continue along. We're going to do two more single crochets in a row. So one and two. So you have your total of three so far because that first one was one. So that is your constant. The next three are half doubles. So one, two, and three. Okay, so that's your constant and so the next two are gonna be double crochets. So just one and two. And now you have one stitch left and that's gonna be the one that's gonna zip around. So I, I need you to do a total of seven and your project's gonna naturally rotate as you put more in into a full circle. Well into a semicircle. So that was one and two going into the same stitch for three and we got four we have five six and seven. So now that you got your seven in here I need you to get your stitch markers out and let's start marking stuff up. So right here you can see the semicircle of all uh, seven are here. So what I want you to do with this pull your hook out and I want you to uh, put it out and you can see all seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we wanna skip the first one and go to the second and grab these stitch markers. You need a total of three this time. So one, two, and three. So go into the second one and put a stitch marker in. This will indicate to you if you were watching the small one where it's going to branch out in order to uh, make the spokes. Skip the next one and put a stitch marker into the next one which will be the exact middle of the semicircle. Skip the next one and go to the second one over and that's the one before the end to help you indicate that and I want you to put it right in there as well. So now all three are marked. So you can see the spokes. So here's one spoke, two, and three and it's not until round three is that there's gonna be one in the middle here and one in the middle here. Let's go along the bottom side and we're gonna create the reflection of the mirror or of the water. So the next one stitch in a row is going to be a double crochet. So one and do another one. This is gonna be two in a row and now we're back to the constant and the constant is the half double crochet. So there's gonna be three in there, uh, three in, into, uh, three in a row, sorry. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next two are going to be single crochets each. So one, and two. And the next one is gonna be two single crochets. This is the very uh, edge of the other side. It's the other, it's the other side of the, of the turn. So there's two and I want you to join it to the top of the first single crochet that is marked with a stitch marker. See it's not always easy to tell where you stop and start and that's a great way to be able to do that. Okay, so there you go. So that I've just done round number one. I've got my stitch markers all laid in and now I'm ready for round number two. So now ready for round number two. So round number two we're gonna do our constant of three singles, three halves. This time there will be three doubles and then right where we've got the stitch marker here is exactly where the first one will branch out. Okay, so it'll have three double crochets in. So these stitch markers really give that indication on how to do that. So I like to start differently than what you may think. So sometimes I get confused and sometimes I will say, okay, this is my first single crochet and by the time I get here, I'm off by one. Okay, so what I like to do is that I like, I like to look at the stitch marker which will be right here and I like to count back so I can see that I got three double crochets, three halves and three singles and it will tell me exactly where to start. So what I like to do on the project is that I like to count back. So, so here's the stitch marker. So go to the one before it. So that's a double, double, double and then the next one is half, half, half and the next one is single, single, single. So I just verifying to myself where I am in this pattern and this makes it a lot easier for me and this is something I do off camera. You don't have to but I will do that with each one of these rounds. So let's move along to round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into the first one right where that stitch marker was because that's where you did. Move up that stitch marker. So take the hook out, go into that stitch you just made 
and just pull a section of that stitch marker through and that will indicate to you when you get all the way back around. Again a helpful tip. So single crochet in the next two, one and two and then the next three are the constant for the half double crochet. So three halves in a row. So we got one, two and three and now this time round number two we have three doubles in a row and when I look at it you see the stitch marker here this is at the fourth one so I know that I'm in the right track. So three doubles in a row. So one and we have two and we have three. You're gonna notice this kind of buckling a little bit. It settles down. You can, you can trust me on that one. So the next one is the stitch marker and if you look at the pattern as well this is where it branches out where there's gonna be three doubles right here. So right where it's in the stitch marker put in three double crochets. So one, two and three and right in the middle one of those the group of three like we did with the small wing pull it this, pull out the, the strand go into the middle one of the three that you just did and pull a section of that same stitch marker up so that you can identify that middle one next time that you come around. Just makes it life a lot easier. You're gonna single crochet or sorry double crochet just one time into the next stitch available to you and then you're back on another stitch marker here which is the center point and there's gonna be three into that one as well. So we got one, two and three. And what I want you to do then is that I want you to pull a section of that in the middle one. Just pull a section of it. You can pull it from the back or the front. It doesn't really matter. As long as you pull it through just like a section of it. Okay the next one is one double crochet by itself. And then the next one is got the stitch marker in so that means that there must be three in that one. So the stitch markers indicate to me which ones have the three double crochets in them. I tried it a couple times without doing the stitch markers. It's a lot easier to do it with and it doesn't take much time. Middle one move up the stitch marker so you can identify it next time. So let's go down the other side. So down the other side we're going to um, for the repeat pattern it was one double crochet by itself and then we're back onto the pattern itself. So there's two double crochets now in a row. Okay there's three half double crochets in a row. Okay and now there's gonna be three singles in a row which is your constant. The halves and the, and the singles are your constant that you can always rely on to be the same. And now we're gonna start wrapping around the bottom end of the wing. So in round number two, so in round number two you only have one stitch left and so that's one is gonna be three single crochets into that one. So one, two and three and join it to the beginning. See where you've done the single crochet? That's where you're gonna join it and that concludes off round number two. Just like this. Let's move along to round number three. So moving along to round number three I think that you're catching on to the graphs. This is the second time we're doing wings so it's hopefully that you're catching on. We're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into the same one and I want you to move that stitch marker up so that you can identify that when you come back around. Okay the next one is gonna be a single and the next one. That's your constant. Here's your half double crochets for your constant. There's three in a row so one, two, and three. So on round number three there's more double crochets then that have to come in before you get to the stitch marker which is where it starts branching off. So this is round number three. There's gonna be four double crochets in a row. So you got one, two, three and four. And see you're right before the stitch marker. So in the stitch marker this time we're gonna put in our three and in round number three we're gonna add another spoke which will be the number of spokes four and five. 
So there's gonna be three into this one with the stitch marker. Again move that stitch marker up so you can identify it next time. Now the next stitch is going to be one double crochet by itself and then the next one is gonna be another group of three. Okay so let's put in three double crochets in there. So this is your next spoke that you're creating that doesn't exist until at this point. And grabbing another stitch marker from your um, collection. I need two here. Uh, so I'm gonna put a middle one in. So this is a new spoke that never existed until now. So that's in and we carry on. So the next one is one double crochet by itself. Here's the very middle of the wing. It's gonna be three into that one because there's a um, a stitch marker in place and because it's the middle. Okay, come in. I want to move that stitch marker up again. Okay, so the next one is going to be one double crochet by itself. The next one is going to be another group of three, which is a new spoke that is just beginning on round number three. Same thing, add a stitch marker to that middle one. Okay, the next one is one double crochet by itself and then this is the final fifth spoke right here where it's marked and there's gonna be three into that one. One, two and three. Okay, so to keep the repeat pattern you've gotta do one more uh, double crochet here and then we go back to the pattern to look. So the next three are going to all be double crochets. So one, two, see the lots of counting here, three and four. Okay and now the next three is your constant so that's your halves. So half double crochet so one, two, and three. The next three is three single crochets and then we're gonna wrap around the bottom of the wing. So these three are your constant. So in round number three the storyline is gonna change a little bit on the back end here. So the next stitch is gonna be two single crochets. So one and two. The next one is going to be three single crochets. This is the very back of the wing. Okay, there's three in that one and the final one is going to be two single crochets and you need to join this then to the top of the first one that you have marked with a stitch marker and that concludes round number three. Just like so. Again everything will settle down once you get this established. So let's move along to round number four. Round number four let's move up. We're gonna chain up one and we're going to single crochet into the same one. And we're gonna move up that stitch marker to help me identify that next time. And the next two are going to be a single crochet each. So one and two. So there's your constant with three in a row. The next three is your halves, your half doubles. So one, two, and three. Okay, so this is round number four. So this time there's gonna be a total of five double crochets in a row before you hit the first stitch marker. So let's count those out. So you got one and two, three, four, and five. Like so. And then here's your stitch marker. So now it's gonna branch out to do that. So you gotta put three doubles in that one. So one, two, and three. And move that stitch marker up to the middle one to identify it next time. And now in between each one for round number four there's gonna be a total of uh, total of three double crochets in a row before you hit 
the next stitch marker. So let's do that. So we got one, two, and three. See? And the next one is the stitch marker. So I know my counts are right. And so then the stitch marker, there's gonna be another three doubles in that one. So one, two, and three. So in the middle one of the three, you want to move that stitch marker back up and move along. So the next three are gonna be by themselves. Three double crochets in a row. So one, two, and three. Okay, here's the stitch marker. So that one's gonna have three into that one. So one, two, and we got three. Move that stitch marker up to the middle one. So the next three are by themselves. So it's three doubles in a row. So you got, you got one, two, and three. Okay, here's another stitch marker. There's gonna be three in a row. So you got one, two, and three. Okay, the middle one of the three, obviously stitch marker is moving up. Next three are by themselves. Do you see what I'm saying? Like these stitch markers just help you instead of having to count and, and double check yourself all the time you can rely on those stitch markers to be accurate. Just like so. So this is your three in a row. Here's your next one. Okay, it's your middle. I think the stitch marker must have fallen out of that one. So you got uh, three into that one. And even though it's fallen out of that one, I'm still gonna fix it for the next time. Okay, so let's carry on. So the next three, as per the repeat pattern, is going to be three doubles in a row. So that's uh, taking you back to the highlighted spaces that you see on my other chart that I did. Okay, so carrying along, we have that done and now the next two are going to be double crochets. So you got one and two. And now we're going to then do the constant. So that's gonna be three halves in a row. So one, two, and three. Three singles in a row. So you got one, two, and three. There you go for that. And now we're ready to wrap around the bottom end of this. So for round number four, what we're going to do then is that the storyline is gonna change just slightly. So the first one we're gonna do, there's gonna be two singles into the first one. And into the next one, there's gonna be one single crochet. The next one, there will be two single crochets. So one and two. This is the very middle of the back. There's only gonna be one single crochet back there. The next one there's going to be two single crochets. So one and two. The next one is going to be one by itself. And the very last stitch that you're running into here is going to be two single crochets into the very last one and you're going to then just join it to the top of the first one that you started with like so. Okay, so you can see it's really kind of working out now and uh, let's carry on and let's move on to round number five. So let's start round number five. We're gonna chain up one, one single crochet into the same one that you did the join with and that's your first one. Move up that stitch marker once again. Okay, so then it's in the constant area. So that was one of three, so two more singles in a row. So one and got two. Then the next um, three are going to be half double crochets. So you got one, two and three and now you got a bit of a more of a space. So this is round number five. So your six 
double crochets that will stand by itself before you hit that first stitch marker in this time around. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's six and the stitch marker is next. So it tells me that I'm in the right spot. So this one obviously is gonna have three into that one space. So one, two, and three. So the middle one of the three, you obviously move that stitch marker up to help you. So for round number six, there is a total of one, two, three, four, and five. There's a total of one, two, three, four, five. There's five double crochets that will stand by themselves. So one, and just keep moving along until the next stitch marker. This is two, three, four, and five. And look at that. See, stitch marker is next. So I know I'm on the right track. So let's put in three into that one too. So one, two, and three. Move that stitch marker up. Okay, another five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, there we go. And then at three are in a, uh, into the same one. So one, two, and three. So middle one of the three. Okay, another five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. You hit another stitch marker. So there'll be three in that one. Hopefully you're getting the pattern by now. Middle one of the three, move that stitch marker up. Okay, another five in a row. And I'm looking for the stitch markers to indicate to me when I've stopped going all the way around on the semicircle. So it gets to the point where I actually trust in the stitch markers. So if I was on my own, I wouldn't be counting to five at all. I'd just be looking, I'd just be filling in the double crochets as they go. So here's the stitch marker in the next one. There's another three into that one. middle one of the three. And we gotta continue that same repeat pattern as we're going around. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that we fill in another five and then the repeat pattern is done going around that semicircle and then we come back around to the other side. So one, so I will count this one out. Two, three, Oops, that was supposed to be three. Three, four, and five. Okay, so now we've got that done and now we just have to look back to the pattern. So five, so now we have to, for this particular one, we've got our five. So one, two, three, four, five, and we have to fill in and we have to do a total of where we got here on this pattern. So we have to do a total of two more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. My apologies on this one here. So we're gonna do this one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. There should be six right after this one. I'm sorry about that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's right. Okay, the next two are going to, or sorry, that is everything. So you got six after that and now we're gonna go back to our constant. So it's gonna be half double crochet in the next three. One. 
Do you see how I just was able to correct myself just by looking at the stitch marker and where I was? If I didn't have that stitch marker in there <laughs> it would not have been pretty. So we got three halves in a row and then a singles into the next three. So one, two, three. So now we're gonna wrap around the, ba the base of this one. So this one is round number five. So let's uh, think what we need to do. So the next one is gonna be one single by itself and then the next one after that is two into the same. Okay, the next one is gonna be a single and then the next one is gonna be two into the same. So we're gonna be approaching around the ba the bottom middle section. So that was two into the same. So the next three are going to be by themselves. This is the very bottom of the, the wing. So one, two, so they're three in a row. They're not into the same one. Okay, so you got three in a row and now we're gonna carry on and start doing the expansion again. So the next one is gonna be two into the same. One and two. Next one's by itself for a single. The next one is two into the same. And the very final is going to be one. Like so and then just join it to the top of the, that one. So that was round number five. So we're gonna carry on one more round for round number six and then we're gonna do a border next. So let's move along to round number six. So round number six we're gonna chain up one and I'm going actually pretty much at the speed I would be if even if I wasn't filming. Some of you may be too quick. Remember the charts are there, the written words are there. Just take your time. It, it took me time to understand it too. So you got one already done. I just moved up my stitch marker and you got three singles in a row. That is your constant your half doubles. There's gonna be three of those. That's your constant. So that's never changed. This is the last row of doing it like this and then we're gonna do a border and that's it. That's, it's not so bad. So now we're going to do, this is six. So now there's gonna be seven double crochets in a row before we hit the first stitch marker. So we're getting bigger. So let's count those out together. So we got one, two, three, four, this is five, this has got six and seven. So there's your stitch marker. So that, what's that mean? Three is going into that one. So let's start moving around the semicircle of, of this wing for the final rotation of doing it this way before we add that really easy border. So again, the middle one, you know what? This is the last round. I wouldn't even bother to move up the stitch marker which I'm not going to because it doesn't make a difference on the border at all. So what we need to do then once you get your three in, we have to then start expanding as we go around. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I just wanna verify that I'm gonna count off camera. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a total of seven. So there's gonna be seven double crochets in a row or you can just look at it and just fill it in with double crochets until you hit the next stitch marker. It's up to you on how you want to execute that idea. You, if you've been following your stitch markers, you can do it that way without even counting. And I'm, I'm not even counting because I'm pretty confident on, in on it. I'm pretty confident myself. So okay, so here's the one right before the stitch marker. So here's the stitch marker. So we're gonna put three into this one. Again, I'm not even gonna bother to move up the stitch marker because it doesn't make a difference for the border. So it, it does, the spokes have no relevance for the outside border execution. So let's just double crochet ourselves one in each until we get to the next stitch marker. Sometimes I literally count stitches even when I don't need to. So I'm saying I'm not counting but in my brain I am. <laughs> Go figure, right? I'm sure we all do that. I find myself because of crochet I count things that are just kind of mundane and things that don't even matter including when I'm walking and stuff. How many steps I take. And I think it all comes back to crocheting and counting stitches. So here's the next another stitch marker. There's gonna be three into that one. Again don't worry about the stitch marker moving up. So you can kind of go faster without stitch markers but I don't think you can go as fast um, in the long term because it's the stitch markers that are giving me the visual clu uh, clues that I need. 
So let's carry on until we get to the next stitch marker. So I found it with these uh, particular wings uh, what you're gonna wanna do afterward as I'm talking to you is that you're gonna wanna dampen them like don't soak them. Just damp them maybe even a spray bottle and then just kinda shape it and lay it somewhere to dry. Don't over soak so and make sure that it gets it does dry completely. Uh, and make sure it doesn't like stay wet for days because then it will start to, to mildew on you or just smell like mold. So here's another stitch marker. You're putting three into that one. So what I have is a little Con Air steamer that I steam my projects with and then I just leave them on my table and then I come back to it in the morning and it's usually dry. And it's usually honestly dry within a matter of an hour or so. Anyway, it doesn't stay wet for very long when you use a steamer. Um, if you are gonna use a spray bottle and stuff you're gonna ma probably make it more wetter. Again, that's up to you. Coming back around and I wanna do a verification count. So this is the last stitch marker for me. So I just wanna count off camera. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, makes sense. So now that your final one is done, okay, there's gonna be seven double crochets in a row from this point before we go back to the constant of the half double crochet. So do seven in a row of doubles. So we got one, two, I don't know why I'm dropping the stitches. We got three, four, five, six, and seven. And now that you got that done, we're gonna go back to the constant. So it's gonna be three halves in a row. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. Next ones are gonna be three singles in a row. So one, two, and three. And now we're gonna then start zipping around the back end here. So let's uh, begin to do that. So the first two stitches are going to be single crochets by themselves. So I got one and two. The next one is gonna be two singles into the same. And then the next two are by themselves. So one and two. The next one is gonna be two into the same. And now we're at the very back end of the, the wing, the very bottom. So the next three are gonna be by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then we're gonna come around as we come back up here. So we're going to do two into the next one. And then two by themselves. One and two. Two into the next one. One and two. And the two finals are gonna be one single crochet each. And then just come and join into the first one that you started with. You're now officially done this color. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna trim this yarn and weave it in and I'm gonna come back with the border. And the border is really quite simple and I don't need to take you all the way around. I can just explain it to you just right off the hop and get you to do the rest on your own because you can figure that out on your own as well. Okay, so just weaving in your ends and you can remove your stitch markers at this point. Everything is completely done except for the border and I find the border really kind of stabilizes this project. So pull out all your stitch markers. And you can uh, kind of pull on your project to kind of weave in the ends or to kind of like make everything stabilize on its own. Okay, so just give it a few good pulls. Just like so, don't be shy of it just like there. See it kind of has a little bit of a natural curve going up which is kind of neat. And so what I would do is then spray this with a little bit of water or steam it and then just push it down and then just let it dry upside down and it will stay flat on the top because that's how I did the original. So let's do your border next and this is the final round number seven. Okay, let's do the final border. I'm going to just not create a slip knot but I'm gonna go to where I finished and I wanna pull that loop through 
and lay it down. So lay that down a little bit and then you're gonna trap that into position. So let's uh, get you started and then I'll show you the repeat pattern going all the way around. So you're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into the same one that you just did the join and then you're going to single crochet into the next three. So there's gonna be a total of four single crochets in a row. So one, two and three. So with the join you did plus these three that gives you four. So I'm just going to then in the next one I'm gonna place two single crochets in there. So one and two. Now here's the repeat pattern going all the way around which I'll leave that with you and there's gonna be a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there'll be seven double cro or single crochets in a row. So this is three, four, five, six and seven and then the next one will have two. So that's your repeat pattern going all the way around. I'll meet you at the other side because you're not gonna finish equally on this side here and I'll show you how to do that. So remember seven in a row and then two, seven in a row and two. So as you get all the way back around what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have your doubles here and then there's gonna be three stitches left and think about it here you put in four and then and then you put in two so that remember there were seven in a row and then two seven in a row. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna put three on this side after you got your double in there because you're just following the pattern as is. So the three by themselves are the finale of doing the border and you're just going to just fasten or do, just join with a slip stitch and then that's it. So that's kind of how you do it and then you can see that it, once this border was added it can stabilize it and so now you just need to get two of these done and then you can move along and attach it to the cocoon and we're gonna cover that next. Finally you're ready to do the final assembly of attaching the wings to the body. I'm gonna show you a sped up video on what I did in order to attach it. Notice that I used spare yarn to attach the wings to the body prior to sewing so I could position and notice I used tape measures and what my hands were doing in order to position this better. So once you're done this particular chapter you are ready to give this as a gift and let's show you exactly what I did. So now we're back and now it's time to look at here and see how we're gonna assemble this and all we're gonna do is whip stitch these wings. Now from what it appears to me that these wings are not actually sewn together here but you can if you want to. If you want them to be kind of aligned with each other it's up to you. You just make sure you use the same color. So I'm gonna use the outside color which is the yellow and join it within the yellow. Do you see here that this here is it at the halfway point in the middle? That's just a visualization for you to be able to figure that out and then what I would do is then you can either attach here if you want to but all you just gotta do is just whip stitch yourself across and join the wings. So when you're joining these wings what's gonna happen is that you wanna look for how they're, how they are. So you will notice that this here is the point and then this goes around here. This here is the point and then it goes around. So when you go to put these together like so and I still have my stitch markers in when I did it. Here's the point and when I get the other one out that I have here, here's the point here. So I can kind of see how they can kind of come together and then I'm going to join it here. So I'm gonna show you how to whip stitch next. And then
My friends at Yarnspirations.com and myself, Mikey of The Crochet Crowd, would like to thank you so much for joining us today in making the Bumblebee Snuggle Sack. It's been a pleasure to teach you today and of course if you're looking for more free patterns and ideas, you can count on us to keep the inspiration free and the ideas flowing. Have an amazing day and hope to see you back here real soon. Bye bye.